what is the best time of day or day of the week to host a webinar uh, or you know online experience? This is a tricky question because it depends so much on where your audience is or the people you want to reach. Um, what is their kind of work habit? Do they yeah, are you trying to reach them after work, before work, um, on the weekends? Uh, and so let me let me explain kind of my thinking process around what is the best time for a webinar. Um, number one, the best time for a webinar is when you have the best energy to do the webinar. Best day of the week, best time of the day. So for example, there may be actual constraints within your household. You know, it's like maybe there's, you have, you have kids running around or, or whatever, where it's like, all right, I need them to be in school or at, you know, daycare. <clears throat> so that's a, so I think I would say constraint number one is always the best time and day for you, really. Because if you're bending over backwards to say, oh, I, 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 I hate working on Saturdays or it's even against my religion, but I want to reach people you know, my ideal clients are on Saturdays, then you are bending over backwards and you're going to break your back because you're going against your own values and your own <clears throat> lifestyle design. Because if you're a, if you're a, um, you know, one second here, if you are an authentic business, you're trying to create your own ideal uh, lifestyle through your business. Don't bend over backwards say, oh, you know, my clients want me to do it. Uh, you know, before they go to work, but that's really early for me to wake up. Don't do it. Listen, you choose your own time and your ideal clients will come along or you will find people who can do those times. So that's constraint number one. Now you say, George, that's fine, but I can do Saturdays or whatever, or I can do 7 a.m. on a Monday, or I can do, you know, I'm willing to do 6 p.m. after they come home from work. That's that's a good energy for me. I'm, I'm good with those times. You have several of those. Then guess what? You take a poll of your existing ideal audience. You could you, you have many people in your audience. You have people of different ages and different pe places in the world, perhaps. Well, then you, you know, you thoughtfully email, you know, each, you know, create a Google form. Okay, create a Google form a poll to say which of these days and times are you most likely to be able and would enjoy attending a webinar on a topic of, of that interests you, right? Like you, you, you give them the, you know, your own top five choices that, that you said, yeah, these would be my ideal energy uh, and my house is quiet or I'm able to, and it, the lighting is good because I'm facing a window and I get natural light, whatever it is. Okay. Yeah. Lighting matters. Obviously um, you give the Google form five, five of your ideal times and you email, you know, 10 to 20 of your ideal audience members because of, you could post it on, you could post it on social media, but then you're getting good. You're going to get people voting who aren't your ideal audience members because you're going to have your Aunt Sally vote. You're, <laughs> you're going to have some people who are not, you know. So that's this is why I say email tw 10 to 20 of you. Okay. Okay. If I'm targeting people in their 20s or in their 50s or whatever you're targeting, email those people who are your, you know, some of them are your friends, some of them are your acquaintances or colleagues or even family members, but they represent your ideal demographic, psychographic, the, the kind of person you would love to work with. You email them, you ask them to vote by a certain due date, deadline, okay? And if you want to give an incentive, you can to say, all right, for voting, um, I'm going to give you, you know, uh, free access to my next webinar instead of charging for it. You're going to get free, you know, whatever it is. You're, you're, right now, you're in the beginning stages of your business or you're, you're making this important decision on when you're going to be doing things regularly right? That's an important decision. And it's worth giving some incentive to get the 10 to ideally 20 people to vote. <clears throat> and then once the votes come back, now you have, and by the way, your votes should include time zones. If you, for example, for me, I address people in not only the Americas, North America, South America, but also I address people in Europe and I address people in Australia and Asia. So for me, what's happened, and just to give you a shortcut, you know, this video is going a bit long, but you say, George, give me the, give me the best times. You know, you, you've been doing this for 13, 14 years. You probably know the best times for people in the world. Well, again, like I said, I do it at the times where I have good energy and 
yes, I have noticed certain times I, you know, within my constraints. These are so I do mine on um, again. These are not perfect, but whatever. I do mine on Monday at 6 p.m. Pacific is one of my times. <clears throat> Monday, 6 p.m. Pacific is Australia and Asia. Well, Monday, 6 p.m. Pacific is 9 p.m. Eastern. Way too late, middle of the night for Europe. But uh, Australia, Asia, it's daytime, okay? And then the other one I do is Wednesday at 9 a.m. Pacific, which is 12 p.m. Eastern. And it's uh, usually 4 or 5, 5 p.m. GMT, BST. So Europe is late afternoon, early evening. And um, anyway, that works well for my household, my energy, and also for my clients, those kind of those two time zones. But whatever, you should put time zones in if you're trying to serve people in different parts of the world. So it's like, okay, which of these five options work for you? You know, Monday at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, XYZ Sydney time, you know, whatever. Or, you know, Thursday at 7 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Eastern, you know, um, 3, 3 p.m. GMT, whatever. So give those time zones. And then once the votes come in, now you get to decide. Do you want to go with the majority rules? Yeah. And do you, it's kind of like flipping a coin. You know, if you flip a coin, you're like, oh, I wish it, it ends up being tails or whatever, because that's really my, what my heart's desire is. <laughs> Same thing. When the votes come in, you can still decide, you know what? Yeah, I changed my mind. I don't really want to do Wednesdays at 9 a.m. or whatever, because that conflicts with George's courses. No. Um, you, you, could, you get to decide. And here's the final thing I'll say. Whatever you decide, stick with it. Ideally, you build your business and your life <laughs> around those times. Now, you, know, you can, of course, change it in the future if you need. But don't just keep changing it because you're, you're essentially going to be building an audience who respects those times from when you do webinars. And yes, they will eventually, as you keep growing your audience, they will actually shape their lifestyle, not lifestyle, but they will shape their schedules around what well, George does his classes on Wednesdays at 9 a.m. So I better not have a client if I want to attend his classes. And thank goodness George keeps that stable, you see. Like imagine if I were to teach courses at different times, at the, I'm like, George, I, I thought you always did Wednesdays at 9 a.m. No, now I'm doing Thursdays at 2 p.m., right? So that's why at the end of the day, you have to keep it stable so that as you build your audience around it, those are the people that are going to keep working with you. And it's it's good good energy for you at those times. Remember, that was our first constraint. So I hope this is helpful. And yeah, I, I appreciate a comment here in the, in the live chat to say, you know, we are such nice people. <laughs> we want to bend over backwards for everybody. Oh, 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 you can't do Wednesdays 9 a.m.? Oh, okay. Oh, four people could, but one person couldn't. So let, let me, let me, let me like do this incredibly complex puzzle to figure out five people's get. No, come on. Ridiculous. It's like you will always be bending over backwards. If you say, oh, but, but this, these two ideal clients can't do these times. It's all. And the irony is even if 20, you know, all 20 people selected Wednesdays at 9 a.m., you're, you're going to do Wednesdays at 9 a.m. And 10 of those people can't tell you they can't make it. You're like, I thought you voted. It's always going to be like this. It's all so e that's why essentially I started this whole thing with sandwich sandwich number one was your own constraints of your own best energy and day for your household and sandwich at the very end of the sandwich is still your choice, but keeping it stable, knowing that even the people who voted for whatever, some of them are going, oh, I couldn't make that time. Well, I thought you told me you could. <laughs> right? No, it's sometimes they say they can't make the time as an excuse to say, oh, I'm not that interested in your topic, but I'm not going to tell you that. So long story short, you have to make the choice and keep it stable and the universe will bend to your will. <laughs> okay. So I hope this is helpful.